So, other mode of transfer, so, so far we looked at free flight transfers okay? and you can also achieve the stable transfer by dip, what do you mean by dip? So, you can also touch the droplet once it formed onto the pool and when you pull it back, okay? so the, you also change the force balances. You can overcome the surface tension because the liquid surf pool surface tension would make sure that the droplet is attached. Right? So, that kind of transfer is known as dip transfer or short circuiting transfer. Okay? So, this is a part of non free flight transfer. In free flight transfer, droplets are transported from the tip by free flight, is not it? So, you can also achieve the transfer by short circuiting. There are a lot of advantages having a short circuiting, short circuiting transfer. So, one of the major advantages is seen is controlling the heat input. So, we can also carefully manipulating by, by carefully manipulating the, the event of short circuiting, we can switch off the arc momentarily. Okay? So, that when the droplet is transferred, it is transferred by surface tension of the liquid no other factor. By doing so, we can reduce the superheating of the pool. Okay? So, the one example uh, the schematic I show you here from uh, post John Norris book. So, basically what we do is, so wire is continuously fed, is not it? If the melting rate is equal to the wire feed rate, what happened to the, the arc length? If a melting rate is equal to the wire feed rate arc length becomes constant, is not it? But you can also carefully manipulate the feeding rate such a way that you slowly bring the wire towards the work, work piece or well pool. Okay? So, you increase the speed of wire feeding such a way that you slowly you can bring the, the, the work piece or the, the filler to the work piece and establish a short circuiting. Right? It's clear. And once the short circuiting happens, and you also increase the the current, isn't it? And then what happens? So once you have a short circuiting happens, you can also transfer the droplet to the workpiece. So you form an a droplet, and then once you are dipping it you melt the droplet and then subsequently you can pull the wire back. So, whatever is molten is detached by the surface tension of the well pool. Yes, it is clear. And in this process, the advantage is here, during these three steps, arc is not there, is not it? So, when the moment the short circuiting happens, arc is gone. Okay, and then you can dip the filler, okay, either filler can melt before the short circuiting or during short circuiting it can melt and then you can transfer the droplet by retracting the wire back. And during this process, by carefully manipulating the current voltage waveform, we can transfer the droplet without any explosion. So, that is very critical because if you keep on passing the same amount of current, when you form a neck, then you increase the Lorentz force so high and you will have explosion. Okay? So, your power source should be capable of turning the current off the moment short circuiting happens. Right? Okay? So, by deliberately keeping the wire fade slightly higher than the melting rate, you can establish short circuiting. The moment short circuiting is established, we will have to identify that moment and then switch off the current or reduce the current. Okay? And then the molten droplet at the tape can be transferred to the workpiece by surface tension of the liquid pool. Right? It is clear? I will show you a video, it will be very clear. So, you see the transfer. So, what is happening here? So, you have an arc. So, transfer happens by the short circuiting. And during the short circuiting event, there is no arc. You see that? So, you establish the arc 
with an arc length and then you switch off the arc the moment the source circuiting happens and then you transfer the droplet by the surface tension of the liquid pool. Yes, is clear? The explosion is the arc. Okay, so so we have uh, uh, this is a cycle. Okay, first is arc is struck. Okay, so this is the first event. The video is recorded. Yeah. So now a pulse. Okay, the droplet is molten. The tip formed a droplet, and then you are also pushing the wire because your feed, feed rate is higher than the melting rate. Okay. And then uh, the moment the uh, source circuiting event happens, the power source switch off the current. Okay. So, then we can, we can, the power source can measure the source circuiting event by measuring the voltage. Okay. When the moment the voltage becomes extremely small, that means that source circuiting has happened. Okay. And then the current is switched off. Arc is completely gone. So now the wire it can be retracted back. And during this process, the surface tension of the pool pulls the droplet with its surface. Okay. So it goes back and droplet is transferred. You see that? And then the moment a critical length is achieved arc is struck, ignited by the high frequency ignition and this process continues. Yes, so you keep on doing it. So to achieve such a kind of complex metal transfer, the power source characteristics is extremely important because power source would also calculate how much it melts, yeah, melting rate should be calculated accordingly, wire feed rate also be controlled so that you, you can establish the source circuiting at a given defined interval. The moment source circuiting, source circuiting is established, again power source should measure the voltage of the system and the moment the voltage becomes extremely small, current should be switched off. And then droplet can be detached by retracting the wire back. Okay? So what happens if you keep on passing the current? So then you will have an explosion. Okay, so if the, if, if the current is passed continuously, so in this case, suppose the current, the equal amount of current is passed like an arcing current and you have an, a very small area neck forming when you are retracting or when you are doing a source circuiting and you have an enormous amount of Lorentz force concentrating on, on a very tiny neck. Okay? So if Lorentz force is concentrating on a tiny neck, obviously it will cause an explosion. Right? Because the, if you keep the current constant, the amount of Lorentz force is confined to a very tiny area. Okay? And the, the moment you constrain the Lorentz force, you have an, an explosion because the, all the fundamental, the electrons are concentrating now on a very small neck. So that is the reason. So when you want to establish a source recording transfer, you need to make sure that the current is switched off. Look, look at the cross section area. Okay? it is decreasing extremely small, is not it? You see that? So that is the reason, so if, if you want to achieve a proper source circuiting event, we will have to make sure that, so when, so this is the current and voltage, the moment the current is, the source circuiting is happened, I will have to bring, make sure that your current is also low. And then you can have a pulse to form arc and the droplet at the tip and then you bring it down. So this is the arcing voltage okay, and arcing current and then the moment source circuiting is established, voltage becomes 0. So arc the, the current becomes minimum. right? And then you continuously again, so this is arcing voltage 
and during this process you give a pulse, uh, current pulse to melt the droplet and then bring it down. The moment the voltage becomes 0, start circuiting, minimize the arc, right, it is clear. So, this is how the controlled dip short circuiting transfer is established. So, this technology is very widely used nowadays in advanced GMIW process and various names. So, one of them is cold metal transfer. So, one of the technology advantage of here is, so the heat input can be reduced significantly because when the droplet is transferred, technically you transfer it at the melting rate or melting, melting point of the, the droplet, is not it? And the arc is not continuously on, right? So, even in the pulsing transfer, the droplet is transferred in much higher temperature, okay? When you are doing a free flight transfer, droplet temperature reaches to the arc temperature or uh, the, it, it is superheated, not arc temperature, it is superheated. So, the droplet is transferred in it, we have to supergate liquid in free flight transfer. Whereas, in the short circuiting transfer, when the droplet is transferred, we also switch off the current. So, when the droplet is transferred, you transfer it in a, in a melting, close to a melting point of the droplet, okay. So, the way the, you are dipping it, so the droplet temperature, melting temperature becomes more or less the same. So, that is why this process is also known as cold metal transfer because the droplet temperature is much, much lower than in a conventional droplet transfer temperature, yes, it is clear. So, this is known as uh, yeah, controlled dips of circuiting transfer. We will see in subsequently in advanced GMAW process when you look at end of this unit, the what are the complex waveforms we use to achieve this transfer. But the basics is this, what is the basic? It's the moment source circuiting happens, voltage becomes 0, and the power source identifies that moment, switches off the current and subsequently the wire is retracted. So, the, uh, the, the, the forward and reverse motion of the wire is controlled by controlling the feeding rate. And how does the uh, this feeding rate is, how does feeding rate control? By calculating the melting rate, okay. So, melting rate has to be calculated for a given diameter wire, for a given uh, composition. So, then we can calculate the melting rate. Once you know the melting rate and uh, we know for a given arc length, when does short circuiting establish, right, it is clear. And these are all possible because of the microprocessor controlled power sources. The power source has a computer inside, a brain inside, okay. So, all the programs these are already preloaded while by establishing uh, the, uh, the entire process. So, if you give, uh, that is why we use in advanced power sources synergy, okay. So, it is all synergically controlled. The power source, because for a given composition filler diameter, the program is already there. So, what will be the feed rate? So, what would be the current it has to use for a pulsing, for a given pulsing, how much it is going to melt, okay? And uh, if it is melting, how much feed rate it has to maintain so that it can establish short circuiting and uh, for a given time interval. Okay. We will see in some calculations when you are looking at in a pulse GMAW, how uh, source circuiting at after one time source circuiting can be established. Okay, it is clear, right, the source circuiting transfer, how you do it. The trick is here, is this is this is the trickiest part, controlling current and voltage. The voltage is controlled by itself because of this source circuiting. At the moment source circuiting happens, current should be minimized to avoid explosion. Yes? Clear? Okay, we will move on. So, the sum of the cases, and if you increase the current tremendously high, and if you also have a shielding gas generated, especially you know in uh, uh, self shielded uh, uh, electrodes, and you may also have an explosion transfer. Okay? So, most of the cases it happens in self shielded electrodes or in, in, a, in flux code arc welding electrodes where you have a very high current and if you are using it and you have an, a gas which is actually generated by the flux and the, the, the gas pressure is contained. So, you increase the uh, plasma jet pressure and the Lorentz force and you may expect an explosion of the droplet. And most of the cases it is extremely um, 
unwanted mode of transfer in any case because you can never weld by exposure transfer. Okay. In most of the cases it is used for uh, spraying or coating and if you want to deposit uh, 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 FCAW wire onto the substrate and you can use that because anyway you do not care about where exactly the droplet is going right. So, you can do an exposure transfer by using high current you can increase the productivity, but in GMAW it causes instability because when you are doing welding you do not expect a droplet to explode and then go everywhere. Okay, you want the droplet to go to the, the well pool, the cavity. If you are, if you are using it in, uh, if uh, using uh, the FCAW or any other electrode for deposit to make a uh, layer, a coating, then you can uh, we can use the explosive transfer. Okay, it's clear. Unfortunately, I don't have any video for this because uh, yeah, we never managed to get that. We need a very high current for explosive transfer. Good. <coughs> so, if you increase sometimes the current, a jetting spray becomes rotating transfer. Okay, because uh, again uh, the, the reasons I told you the same. The jetting, if you start making a jet, and you have an, uh, a Lorentz force continuously forming, and then uh, certain magnetic forces start rotating or it's changing the path of the spray, and you will have a uh, rotating spray transfer it goes in everywhere okay so, and then you end up transferring the droplets at various places okay so again this is also sometimes used for surfacing uh, using an fcaw or in gmaw surfacing so uh, again so uh, for welding applications it is not advisable right it's clear good so, what are the most commonly observed transfer mechanism a transfer mode in various applications. So, as I said for low current GMAW globular okay. and uh, in the CO2 cases CO2 shielded GMAW you see globular and rippled globular okay. and because of the instable uh, instability associated with the CO2. So, the GMW above spray transition it is the drop spray or projected spray it is the same and then uh, once you increase the high current then it becomes streaming and rotating and explosive transfer. An explosive transfer is very commonly observed in self shielding. What is self shielding? You do not give any extra shielding gas. Shielding gas is generated by the electrode itself. Okay, for example, uh, we will go next, sli next sli slides. So, this is an MMAW metal metal arc welding electrode and you have flux on top of it. If this burns generates carbon dioxide. Okay. So, when you have uh, calcium carbonate and it burns, it becomes okay. so, so, we generate shielding gas. Okay, by burning flux. So, uh, this is used for uh, the metal metal arc welding or uh, shielded metal arc welding and because of the CO2 generation and plus high current what you use to melt such a uh, large diameter and you sometimes get an explosive transfer. So, drop spray again just above or in and around the spray transition which is the most advisable uh, the, the transfer mode drop spray or the projected spray because on various transfers you would see. So, you can also achieve the short circuiting transfer by carefully playing around GMAW on the parameters like wire feed rate, voltage, current you can achieve the short tra transfer and other modes you will see when we are looking at uh, the, uh, the, the mechanisms of uh, SMAW and FCAW. 